What's that again? No comments. <laughs> I don't answer questions. I hear something about old guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Grunting and groaning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thomas is making fun of me because every time I move, I go, oh! <laughs> Well, shit hurts. <laughs> what do you expect? Hey, you want to see I hit the concrete at 40 kilometers an hour. Yeah. A lesser person would still be laying there in pieces. Yeah. <laughs> that was even your words. Yeah, yeah. Almost. But it's, <laughs> it still sounds like I'm moving around on an older home, you know? Oh. <laughs> oh. Captain, I had uh -huh. an accident. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, you have to blur that out. Oh, yeah. well, oh, we don't need to see that. <laughs> now it's X rated. Oh, shit, you're gonna get some YouTube strikes now. They're gonna cancel your channel. <laughs> okay, attention, attention. <laughs> All right, now we need to figure out which end needs to be at the yeah. furler. So we gotta open it up and bring out the center pieces. Oh, oh reverse. Uh oh, got wet? Yep. Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, uh, that's the one. That's the head of the sail. Yeah, that's the head. Okay. Thomas has the end that needs to come back to the furler. So turn the roll. So today, as part of our final preparation for a departure from San Andres, we're hoisting our new Genoa from Precision Sails. Now we've had this sail in our locker for a while because it arrived about the same time as Ricardo was born. Unfortunately, during its time in storage, it got a little wet, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of cleanup before we actually hoist it. I would at least try with a sponge and, uh, yeah, when you're never wrong. This, uh, because it's, it's, it's just on the surface. Yeah, so if you have something to wipe it off, you could uh, wipe it off right away. Because uh, if you wipe it off now... Okay, maybe we get some spray nine or some cleaner mm -hmm. with a couple yeah, of cloths right. and we'll just test it and see if we can get it yeah, off. I'm pretty sure you will get it a lot much better. Uh, uh, <laughs> another accident. Uh oh, what's happening? Uh, I'm still sitting on this. <laughs> <laughs> you stood on it or sat on it? <laughs> I say nothing. <laughs> okay. How's it coming off? Okay? Yeah, okay. Not perfect, but okay. Yeah, once you get the surface, the sun will bleach the rest. Okay. I forgot because my boat is like a solo sailor boat, so uh, I have everything. Uh, Let me learn. Yeah, your boat is push button. My boat is push button and for <laughs> solo. So you need to. I, I just knew it, but you always you can do a check which way the winch goes and you put a few rounds on it. Okay, he's pulling up from this end, so you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so you're gonna pull up from that end. So. And Evo is feeding the sail into the track. Listen. Stop, stop, stop. stop. Down. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Okay. okay. Yeah. Keep going. Good one. <laughs>
fights. <laughs> Might need some muscle power. <laughs> you want a Viking. Olympic champion to do? <laughs> I really wish I earned this shirt, but I, it's just a gift. I, mm -hmm. I really don't deserve it. But it looks cool on the sailboat with the. Uh, Somebody want to medal and knock him down and take the shirt? No. <laughs> it's the official uh, part of the official wardrobe for the Norwegian Alpine uh, team at the Olympics. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it's not much to do on a sailboat. <laughs> Okay, let's get the top tape off first. But we have to bring this up here because... Yeah, we just need to get these off. Yeah. Some of the tape is wet and hard to get off, but we definitely want to get it off. But it's hard to do. It's uh, no tension on the rock. Okay, just pull it down a bit, Evo. We'll just get the tape on deck so it's not flocking around so much. Yeah, if I were you guys, I'd kneel down just so that you lower center of gravity in case the sail does give you a push. Okay, yeah. Hey, Ali, how's it going, man? Yeah, come on aboard. Welcome aboard. How's it going over there, okay? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> I, just, I just checked the, uh, the fix that I made with the mainsail and it seems to work great. Yeah? I just need to, to be sure that it's suit, be really great suit and that's it. Yeah, so you glued it on, but it needs to be stitched on. Yeah. Right, okay. Good. First stitches. Come on aboard. So... Okay, how are we doing? Are we ready? Hey, how are you? Hey, great. Oops! <laughs> I, I'm sorry, 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 not sorry. You don't like my wind chime? <laughs> no. Just set it on deck there for now. It drives me nuts. <laughs> no, you are nuts. It just accentuates the problem. Yeah, yeah, it drives me more nuts. <laughs> My English is not so good, so I was like, yeah, it's... Uh... Hey, if there's, if there's too much wind in the sail like that, just wait until the bow comes back around, because right now the wind is putting pressure on the leech, and that's what's making it much harder to pull up. Okay. So wait until the sail is more down the center line. Okay, when it's in the center line of the boat, yeah. That means that the wind is neutral on it and you can pull it up much easier. So okay. just wait till the boat turns back this direction a little bit more. Mario! How's it going, man? How are you? Good, just putting up a new sail, but I'm kind of helpless, so I got help. <laughs> it's a perfect day, there's no wind. Yeah. Almost no wind. Almost no wind. Huh? What about you? Everything fine? Hey, recovering. This is the only one I can't use. <laughs> this one's incapacitated. <laughs> yeah. This shit's all stuck too? Yeah. Okay, so we gotta remind precision, we need to use different tape. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. Then we'll take up the slack on the jib sheets, and tie them off. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. Perfect, though. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Yeah. You're welcome. Much as guys much appreciated. <laughs> okay. It's the next day. And we got our new head sail installed, so we're ready there. So officially, we would be ready to head off to Panama again, but we still can't sail because of this, or at least I can't, you know, go crossing oceans. That would be a little risky, but we have perfect wind. So we're still going to do a little sailing today. 
first we have a couple of projects to do like stow this bad boy so we got to get him off deck which means we got to take him to shore get him folded up and we're just doing a couple of quick projects which the first involves changing the remote on the windlass you guys remember how much problem we've always had with this windlass remote so i've got brian down in the hole giving him a little bit of lesson on uh, wiring so we can change the remotes and get rid of this problem once and for all So how's it going down there? Uh, we have a problem. <laughs> Houston, we have a problem? This broke into pieces also. That one broke too? Yeah. Oh man. It's man. Yeah, totally Look at that. damaged. Chinese switches, they brand new. Yeah, <clears throat> just fell apart. Oh, that's not good. Well, that's our backup switch. So, I mean, <laughs> our system will operate without it, but yeah, that's just disturbing. Okay. I can't believe they sell this shit and it can't even, that's not even a maybe one year old. I mean, we just installed those with Sebastian last year. Yeah, look at that. That's garbage. Unbelievable. And that's in a completely sheltered environment. Covered with lithium grease so it doesn't even have any salt corrosion, but that's just the plastic falling apart. Alright, well that's not good, but not much we can do about it now. We're going to have to order some better switches, hopefully. Yeah, I've given Brian some basics and some wiring here and most of it is just color coded so it's just a straight switch, like a swap, but there's two different remotes that we're replacing, the old wired remote with a new wired remote and also a new wireless remote that's 24 volts, so we're going to hook those up now. Yeah, we've had very good luck with the wiring on the latest hookups that we did with Sebastian last year. So we're using these heat shrink crimp connectors that are very good for marine applications, but still moisture can get in them. If you can get the ones that have hot glue inside, even better, but I don't know if they make the actual crimp terminals with hot glue inside the heat shrink. So what we've been doing is using white lithium grease and spray lithium grease inside the connector before we heat shrink it. So that pretty much alleviates any problem with any moisture getting into the terminal and destroying the connection. So like I say, that's worked perfectly. All the connections we just opened up have been great. So we're just using the same connectors to replace the new module now. How do you like those new wire strippers? <laughs> that's good. Yeah, I have to admit, just another little break. Those wire strippers are the best on the planet. I mean, I had a set of those and they lasted me almost 15 years before they kind of just broke apart. But hey, they didn't know me anything at that point. I just ordered this new set by Klein Tools, of course, made in Germany. <laughs> So hopefully they'll last another 15 years, but those are the really, really good wire strippers because you can strip any size wire up to, I think, 8 gauge or 10 gauge with one hand and they work perfectly every time. So very good investment for your toolkit on board. Okay, so job is complete, and as you can see, we have formally ditched this guy, no longer to be a pain in our butts. <laughs> We've completely disconnected and removed, okay, and now we have this guy, which is the wireless remote 24 volt system. So with this one, basically, we just press and hold the green button until the orange light turns on. Now the system is active. So now, as we push in or out, the windlass will respond accordingly, as you can see. And if anything unexpected or problems with the system, you just press that red emergency button and it immediately powers it down with no delay. So the whole system is deactivated. It also comes with a pocket-sized remote that you can use. You can put it on your belt if you just want to keep it with you at all times. But this will be the main remote, especially if it's raining, because this one's water resistant. Now, as for our backup, you know I don't like to depend on a wireless system because anything can go wrong with it or it could just stop working. So we still wanted a backup wired system and that is now this one. So we've gone to a basic three-wire 
wire controller that again it's just meant for our, like a winch on a truck or something like that but it's still good for outdoor use and it has the two-way switch on it for in and out so again the same thing you want to put out the chain you press out you want to bring in the chain you press in and simple as that. It's a very simple device with a non-coiled cable, so there's no tension on the cable. We put a strain relief on it at the other end, so we shouldn't have any issues there. But as you can see, this one always has issues right there, and that is because of tension on the cable from the coil. It's always breaking right there, and that's where the wires go bad. This controller is worth $200. It's basically just three wires with two momentary switches, and that's it. And this one is exactly the same thing. Now, this one is not necessarily marinized, but I also took it apart and sprayed it all inside with lithium grease, so I'm sure it's gonna last a good long life, especially with no tension on the wire. So, we've got this one here worth $200, and I got two years out of it before I had to start servicing it, and you know I've been servicing this thing for three years, and that's why I hate it. <laughs> that's way too much money to be spending on something that you can't trust, especially when it's your wired backup. So this one is gonna be the wired backup now. Same functionality, $25. Why? Because it's not marine. It's made for a truck. It's still meant to be used in a wet environment, but it just doesn't say boat. So yeah, big difference. But anyway, that is the end of that project. So we are back in business with our new winch. Now it should work perfectly for a good long time, but we still have to replace that other switch. Remember the, the momentary switch that I used as the ultimate backup back down there, and it just fell apart in our hands. I mean, that's just ridiculous. I don't even know what to say. The thing is barely a year old. That's just not good. So I'm going to have to investigate some better switches for that, but we'll order those in and then replace the switches that are our ultimate backup for the, in case everything else fails. But that's the only thing that's left. So other than that, our new Lumar system is up and running perfectly. Okay, so second part of today is getting the boat ready to sail. So we got our anchor fixed, all that is ready to go. But as you know, we've been here for a while, so we have stuff everywhere. Just like you see all these boxes and everything and diesel cans because we've got projects on the go as we get ready and closer to our travel date. But there's stuff that we've had guys here working on things for weeks, literally doing woodwork and cleaning and painting and all kinds of different stuff. And their stuff is all here as well because we never know when they're coming back, if they're coming back, <laughs> when these projects are finally going to finish. So we have to kind of leave it around. But at the same time, when we want to go sailing, we got to figure out what to do with all this junk. So it's basically a cruising dilemma where, you know, the boat's ready to go sailing just about any time. It's just all this loose junk that we got to figure out a place to stow in the meantime. So that's what today I'm going to help the crew get started learning how to do some of this stuff as well. They've been with us a couple of times already. But yeah, we didn't get a chance to put this sail away yet because it got a little bit later in the day than we thought by the time we wrapped up the first couple stuff. But I see they come out and hooked it up with a truck strap. So yeah, I think we'll move it back a little bit further. You can see they just put a truck strap across the tow rail and just secure it so that the wind or anything can't take it away. Now I'm not expecting any significant weather out there. I mean, that's why we're going sailing because it's a nice day. We've got 14, 15 knots of wind, beautiful sunny day. Not gonna be a lot of big waves or anything, but you have to expect the unexpected. That's the first lesson, okay? Always be prepared for what you don't expect is gonna happen, so. That's why it's best to at least just keep this tied down so if a wind or wave or anything sweeps the deck, it's not just going to wash overboard. So, I think we'll just move it back a little bit and resecure it. That should be fine. But then, what I want to do is I'm going to put the guys in a position to be making a decision as to what they think we need to do in order to get this boat ready for sailing. So that's what we're going to talk to them about now. As they put the dinghy in the water because we're probably not going to go with the dinghy up we may just sail with it uh, dragging behind us for this first couple of days and this is something they've got lots of experience with helping with is actually putting the dinghy up and down which is a big help it's always nice to have somebody to help with that every day because we use the davit and everything in the morning and at night so that the dinghy's always out of the water when we're not using it much better for the longevity of the dinghy and of course much better for safety and security you don't have to worry about anybody messing with it at night or anything we don't really worry about that here but it's still just a good practice you know a good habit to have so that your stuff is protected because you don't want to get lax about it because sooner or later you might end up in a place where the security is not as good as it is here and you don't put it up and next thing you know poof it's gone so even just in the case of you know having a storm at night a squall or anything like that it's just hanging back here on one line 
as normal. But if you have a squall come in and breaks that line or breaks the clip or the knot comes undone or anything stupid like that, the dinghy's just gonna drift away and be gone. So that's why we always keep it up. So you guys have already done this with me a couple of times where we've gone around the boat and just discovered what needs to be secured and how to put away. So now I just want you to go around the boat and have a look from your point of view, if it was your boat and you're about to go sailing, what needs to be done. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So you can think out loud, talk about it, look at stuff, say, okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's not okay, that's not okay, that needs to change, whatever, and just give your reasons and explain. All right. All engines stop. Engine stop, we are So stay tuned for next episode when we turn the boat and the helm over to the crew for the first time. And spoiler alert, this turns out to be our last test sail before we depart the island. Brian and Alyssa have learned everything so fast, I have great confidence in them and their ability to help me should things go wrong at sea. So it looks like there's going to be a favorable weather window opening up next week and we plan to take it for a ride. So thanks as always for watching everyone and we'll see you in the next episode. So Let me play, let me play, let me play. Oh, yeah. <laughs>